Welcome to the 4C Fitness Show, starring Michelle and Lisa Cast, live from Skinny Man 31 Studios in the heart of Times Square, New York. And now, here are your hosts, Michelle and Lisa Cast. Day, December 2nd, 2014. Welcome to episode 51 of the 4C Fitness Show, where our motto is choose, commit, challenge, and change. I'm Michelle. And I'm Lisa. Today, we are back from our 50th episode little break there, and we are uh, excited to discuss how to maintain weight loss, a topic that was actually brought to us by one of our viewers. So, really excited about that. Yeah, it's a great topic. Definitely. For those of you joining us for the first time, Michelle and I began our weight loss journey back in 2008 when we auditioned for a little known show called The Biggest Loser. I'm not sure if you known. heard of it. <laughs> um, we actually didn't make it onto the show, but that didn't stop us from setting out on our own weight loss journey all by our lonesome. That's right. Just the two of us. <laughs> uh, and well, along the and way, everyone around us. Along the way, we shed 240 pounds combined. That is right. And we started 4C Fitness because people would ask us how we were seeing so much success with our weight loss on that journey. We realized our passion to help others as well. I got my NASM personal training certification and we started the 4C Fitness Show as a health and fitness resource. We forged partnerships with other health and fitness enthusiasts and professionals to bring a variety of sustainable information to our followers as the fitness world continues to grow and change. Our mantra is the four C's, choose, commit, challenge, and change. We feel these four components are the key to creating a successful, healthy lifestyle. We want to thank everyone who's been tuning in so far. We want to thank everyone who has been giving us positive responses. And um, thank you guys for tuning in right now. If we lose feed, stay tuned. Sometimes it happens. We will be posting the show later on YouTube and on iTunes as well so that you can view it whenever you like. And we want to continue to hear what it is that you're interested in. So reach out to us like this person did really a great <laughs> suggestion it was an awesome suggestion so thank you so much and um we'll bring you guys what it is that you're interested in learning all about thanks michelle yeah on to the noteworthy news thanks to everybody who came out to our 50th episode first anniversary party we had an amazing time we raised a thousand dollars for the leukemia and lymphoma society Woo! and we hope those who won their raffle prizes began to cash in Yes. And thank you to all of those who donated raffle prizes and showed their support. Yeah, it was awesome. Um, so since then, we've kind of been, we had a guest that couldn't make it the week before, and mm-hmm. then last week we were off for Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. So I think we're kind of also letting that, that nice celebration settle in for a minute. It was, yeah. really, it was nice. It was, kind a, of yeah, it was a nice in. break, sure. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And so we had a fabulous Thanksgiving. We hope everyone else did as well um, that morning. It wouldn't be us if we didn't do something fitness related. So we did the Ashenfelter Classic, which is an 8K um, Thanksgiving morning. It was amazing. We had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. Actually, that was this is the first time we actually worked out on Thanksgiving. On Thanksgiving, that's right. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it wouldn't be like us to not. Of course. Especially this year. In and around. Exactly. The holiday. Yeah, so we did well. It snowed a little. Yeah, it was fun. It was cool. It, it was snowy, yeah. rainy. No big deal. We did well. We went to breakfast after. <laughs> breakfast breakfast is great. I mean, I really wanted pancakes. If it wasn't Thanksgiving, yes. I would have had pancakes. Definitely. Instead, I got an omelet. <clears throat> I got a Western omelet so as a matter of What did we get it down to? Our goal was like 55 minutes, and we did it in about 56. Yeah. So that was, and Lisa's speedy. So I'm going to kill it next I time. I slowed her down. <laughs> you did not slow me down. It was just a fun run. <laughs> Wasn't getting any, you know, bundle of money at the end of the race or anything. Oh, if you were, you might be running fast. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Next week on our show, we will have Gina and Emily from EKG, from the EKG Project, um, on to talk about their movement to bring food back to life. And some of our upcoming guests are Michelle from Reverence Apparel, Jody from Pulse Fitness, and if there's anyone else you want to see on the show, please let us know. We'd love to um, have them come down. Yeah, Jody, I uh, actually saw her on Sunday at my run, and she's just waiting on her gym to open. And as soon as she has more info on that, we're going to wait. That's to really have her exciting on. for yeah, her. I'm excited really for cool. her. So she's got a lot of good stuff in store there. So we're excited for that uh, to share about. So a little announcement. I know I mentioned that I was probably going to do Alaska, but it is official. I have signed up and began fundraising for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. And I will be running the Mayor's Midnight Sun, I believe it's called, marathon in Alaska on June 20th, which is also the summer solstice. So that is happening. I want to thank everyone so much for the response to my post today. I've already received donations um, 
Carissa, Michelle, Ashley, Eileen, Kathleen. Mm-hmm. You guys are awesome. So thank you so much for your support. I got a message from Deirdre. I'm just like, I'm overwhelmed already. I'm really excited for you. It's and crazy. I'm really proud of you that you're setting out to do this. Because it's a huge accomplishment. I'm like, scared, and I know you're going to do excited. great. And like, everyone's always already like, you're going to kill it. Like, it's really you're cool. You're surrounded by support. And that's just the way to do it. Yeah. And uh, you're going to do great. And I will be there at the finish line after I finish my measly 13 points. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so measly. <laughs> and um, for those of you who remember or don't remember, our friend Nicole was on our show only a few short months ago in September, and she was the one who introduced us to this world of team and training and Leukemia and Lymphoma Society and running. And so I was talking to her this afternoon, and I was like, I'm so overwhelmed. And she was like, oh, well, be prepared for a lot more of that. So That's I was great. Like, I, don't, I don't think I realized what I was in for. She's like, no, I don't think you do. <laughs> this is so cool. So she's like, enjoy your first because Aww. it's really an experience. So. Thank you guys and thank you Nicole for getting me involved in this and it's really exciting. I so. think I think we have to rewatch her show and like take notes. I, I sometimes do to like get little tips and I'm like, okay, now I know that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so my phone is blowing yeah, up. Yeah, your phone's no, blowing up. Nobody, nope, nobody. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> uh, so on to the exercise excitement. Um, Michelle received a new intense training routine from Sarah Cost with very lif- lifting very heavy. Yeah. Which is great. You're going to see good change. Are you wincing like that because, because of you. I hurt myself? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Are you okay? I think so. Let's see. So Lisa tried, gave it a hand It's last a little night. sore. Gave I think it, it just needs rest. Okay. This morning I was like, huh, I'm not getting shoulder surgery again. I hurt my shoulder. Her I'll be shoulder. fine. Yeah. Yeah, my other one. Here. My good one. For those of unquote. you that have been watching us for the past over a year. Over a year. Crazy. Hello. Yeah. So um, as well as the lifting routine, we're kind of like fully on track this week with lifting and running. You know why yesterday yeah. you considered not going to the gym? Only because a few people told me that I should take a day off because of what I did on Sunday. This is true. Which we're getting to. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're on track because we made it there we're last on track. night. We're still going to be a day off though. What? Uh, well, I'll talk to you about it later. <laughs> <laughs> but um, okay. anyway, on um, our running training as well is in full effect. We're actually signed up in the very near future, I believe in seven weeks, for the uh, Manat- Manhattan Half Marathon. Seven weeks? January 25th. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, beep. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of, for me, just like a fun run to kind of see what the half is all about. And just, well, I was talking to one of our fun other run. running friends, and she was like, we'll probably walk around most of it. Okay. No big thing. But so we're training for that, technically. Um, so this past Sunday... I, for the first time ever, attempted and I guess completed nine miles. I guess. <laughs> I guess I completed it. Yeah. So I'm that unsure. Was, no, I completed it. The last three miles was a walk run, but it still counts. Um, of course it still counts. Obviously. <laughs> That's so, amazing. So I did that on Sunday because I was making up for the fact that I was sick last week and I didn't run on Tuesday. You're, when you try to double up, like when you try to double up your weightlifting yeah. workouts, yeah, you try to double up That's your right. running. <laughs> And so you did I nine miles. I was also really inspired by Gary, one of our team and training friends, yes. and his nine day challenge. Mm-hmm. We for must his never son Matthew. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do nine miles for Gary. And I did it. So I learned a lot along the way. We'll talk more about that during Real Talk. Great. But thank you to um, everyone who was there that day. Lyle, I told you you'd get your shout out. He got me through. He didn't leave hey. my side. So Lyle, he's the best. He really is the best. And I couldn't have done it without him. He's awesome. And then when my fingers swelled up and he gave me Gatorade and a salt pill and saved my life. Saved your life. So um, that's what it means Thanks, to Lyle. be a part of a great group, guys. If yep. you want to do crazy People things. People will save your life. Yeah, they'll save your life. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're also doing the 30-day squat challenge, the Spartan 30-day squat challenge. You have the printout. Oh, really? At the end of your papers. There's an actual printout? There is, just so you can hmm. see and share with everyone. Is there an image or something? There's no image for this one. Okay. There's an image for the next one. Let's see. Sorry, I didn't realize that there was an actual yeah. thing for this. Just so you know. All right, so you're going to do 30 squats a day for 30 days. And your 2014 on a low note. Yes. <laughs> Get low. <That's> right. <laughs> and join the hashtag Spartan 30 squat challenge. That's right. For the next 30 days, we'll be strengthening our lower bodies and cores. But the benefits don't stop there. Squats help improve your flexibility, vertical jump, and overall workout efficiency. So drop your excuse and drop your butt all month long. 
Do we give a shout out to Christine Mockin? Hey, <laughs> Christine Mockin. I call her Mockin. Yeah, thanks, Christine, for um, telling us that this is happening. So and a bunch of us are doing it. Doing it. it. Yeah, it's really. We have to do our squats after the show. We're in a cult. Maybe we'll. Guys, <laughs> we're in a cult. <laughs> it's official. She said it. It's happening. Moving and on. Next on the list mm-hmm. of exercise excitement is the December Shrinking Jeans Holiday Wellness Challenge. Uh, what is this? So this is really exciting. That's the that's the um, workout calendar. Oh, look at that little elf. But Shrinking Jeans has set up a really cool thing for December. So they say the holidays are notoriously hard time to maintain your weight. Mm -hmm. But with a lot of determination, some good old-fashioned support from your cheering section at Sisterhood and the right tools, you can do it. So they want you to... Head over to their Facebook event for the challenge. I feel like this is a really good support network. If you feel if this is something you guys want to check out, um, you can go to their Facebook page. You can join the group for support and motivation. Everything's private on there, so whatever you post, no one else in your newsfeed will see. Only the group will see it. They have daily wellness challenge emails. They have a diet bet, and then of course they have the fitness calendar, and they also have Sisterhood Shots calendar. And you can use hashtag self challenge whenever you post on social media. So for the workout calendar, it's a very merry 30 day calendar. It's to supplement your current routine as well as help you burn off those extra nibbles you take while baking your holiday treats. Oh, um, if you're just beginning, you can do one set daily for more of a challenge. You can do two. If you're feeling really motivated, go for three. So the exercises include planks, crunches, leg drops, mountain climbers, push ups, squats, jumping jacks, and burpees. When we post this, it will show you how to do each thing. Day one is a 30-second plank. Day two is 10 push-ups. Day three is 30 crunches. Day four is 10 burpees, so, fo- so on and so forth. So today is the second, so you will be doing the 10 push-ups today. Okay. You can do one or two sets depending, depending on how you feel. That's great. And they do daily check-ins on the Facebook event as well. So it's a really good community at Sisterhood. They also have a really cute photo challenge. Um, you can post every day. So today would be 25 miles for Christmas. Not exactly sure what that means. But you can post these fun photos <laughs> in social media with them and just be a part awesome. of the community. So, Thanks, Mesh. That is Exercise Excitement Sisterhood. Fantastic. Yes. On to the hit list. It's another Jesse J. <clears throat> I feel like this whole album should just be the hit list. It's really, really good. Mm-hmm. This one's burning up. Um, Literally. We're going to pretend like we're going to play it on the I'm YouTube. Everyone love when we That's sing. That's it. That's it. That's the song. It's a good one. How Download it. How does it make you it. feel, Lise? It, it makes me feel like, because it starts off, I can't remember how it starts off. Oh, my God. It's I just like, like a build. I, yeah, it's a build. Mm-hmm. And when I when it comes on during my workout, I don't even realize it's on, but like it's propelling me at the same time. And then I'm like, oh, it's this song. It's funny that you say that, though. Some songs can actually mess up with your ca- mess up your cadence yeah. and mess up your runs. We need to redo that playlist. Yeah, that, play, that playlist it is a mess. It needs to go. On to the magazine rack. So this week is all about maintaining your weight, maintaining your success, maintaining your weight loss, kind of keeping it as a you know a long term thing. So I found this article called "Weight Maintenance: The True Story," and it turns don't mess work. you up. That's right. Because once you end the diet, mm-hmm. you end your she weight loss, really and you can gain here. it back. She yes, she does. Good stuff here. Yeah. All right. Whatever. Anyway, so for her look, her book. Right. She did a lot of research. Yes, she did. And she talks about weight loss masters. Yes, there you we go. have that. We will, yes. There's the book. Lisa will talk about the book. But for the... Um, she really does look like that lady from the Guffman movies. I love it. Anyway, she calls a weight loss master someone who's lost 30 pounds and maintained... 30 pounds or more and Ooh. maintained that for at least a year. Oh, my God. We are masters. I love how excited you just got. Because I'm not a master of anything. Well, you are a master no, of weight I'm loss. No, I'm a master of weight right. loss. She herself. Do I get like a hat or a trophy so, or Is something? it a little warm in here or is it just me? It's warm. Yeah. I was ready to take off my jacket. Uh, this is happening. She herself lost 50 pounds and has maintained it for 23 years. So Way to go. So she's a true master. She's a McMaster too. A McMaster. <laughs> wow, Lise. <Leith. laughs> anyway. <laughs> All right. So what sets the masters apart from the others? It's actually a good question. That can be answered with data. Weight loss masters understand that to maintain a weight loss takes work. They continue to monitor themselves and stay awake. They stay awake to the food and exercise choices they make so they can maintain their weight. Mm -hmm. 
They weigh themselves on a regular basis. They exercise, and many of them keep food records. They put the scale away. Maybe That's we should take we it back did. out. They also understand that weight maintenance is actually the state of gaining and losing small amount of weight this over and over again. So, so true. true. So in her book, she talks about, and Lisa will get into this more, gaining weight successfully. Mm-hmm. And what it means is that we understand that it's normal to gain a pound or two or three and then take it back down again. It's only when she says a two pound weight gain turns into a 25 pound weight gain that it's really a problem. Yikes. We learn that we cannot expect to lose weight, get to goal and stay at that exact number for life. We live in a range that we're comfortable with. And when we get closer to the high end of the range, we do what we need to do to bring it back down again. Yes, That's man. so true. Oh my gosh. It's so funny because I'm really glad we're doing this show. Yeah. Because even for myself, I'll get to the real talk. Mm-hmm. For myself, I was like always panicking. Oh, I gained three pounds. I must lose these three pounds. I must go three under so that I can then gain six. And just like, it was like disastrous. No. That's how I was thinking in my mind. I kind of got over that a while ago, but it takes time. I'm over it now. Yeah. Now I know that I'm okay. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do what it takes to... You, it's okay to fluctuate a little, yeah. if you, like a five pound range. I know, but it's freaky when I you know. first start maintaining. So the other aspect to keep in mind with maintenance she talks about is that it's boring and dull and that losing weight That's is true. a little more exciting because people will notice, you'll get compliments. Yeah. Then all of a sudden you're um, the same and everyone's and like, oh, it's just you. People get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> so she says in the beginning you get, oh my God, you look fantastic. You know, people haven't seen you in a while or even at work, whatever it is. And then you're just you. in the store. And then she said over time people will just get used to it and it's just not as motivating. So basically the motivation of hearing that reminds you, you know, that it's, that the hard work is worth it. Mm-hmm. But um, you kind of have to realize that without that outside stream, you still have to realize how hard you worked and that you got there and, and what, it's, what it's worth. So she says her goal is to help you know and accept these things up front so you can be successful long term and be prepared ahead of time for the work that weight maintenance requires because it's worth it. And and aside from my blunder in the beginning, basically, she's just talking about how you go on and off diets, you go on and off diets, and you never kind of hit that maintenance point. So Such a blunder. That's right. I was blundering left and right. Blubbering. So tell us more about her book. <laughs> Lisa. You were not doing any of that. You were great. Um, Foodaholic. This is her book. The Seven Stages of Permanent Weight Loss by Irene Rubaum Keller. And I like this book. I think I'd I like thought, to check it out. I thought we would. And it's a guide through the psychological process of losing weight and keeping it off. So it breaks down the process of losing weight into seven stages from realization. Holy cow. I'm large <laughs> to acceptance that weight maintenance isn't a matter of diet. It's a lifelong journey. I think when we started, we didn't really have that concept. Yeah. We were just like, true. Okay. I don't know. I'm going to speak for myself. Okay. Didn't really have the concept that I was going to lose all this weight. And I just figured I'll do what I can to keep it off. But really, the key to keeping it off for us has been Changing. that this is an ch- entire lifestyle change. That's right. So, um, Irene is a weight loss expert and licensed uh, psychotherapist. And it's the book is full of her own personal stories and tough love mm-hmm. uh, because she lost, like Michelle said, 50 pounds and has kept it off for 22 years. The book gets amazing reviews. People just love it. They say, don't buy another weight loss book because this is the way to go. Um, then, you know, they say that she's honest. Um, she's, you know, concise, truthful, sensible. You know, it, it just all c- comes together. And I would really like to check it out further. Yeah, Absolutely. That was a fantastic book review, I must say. Oh, thank you very much. You maybe really want to go out and buy it. Really? Yeah. Oh, you're just saying that? No. I oh, really enjoyed it. Thank you. You did a good job. Thank you very much. So thanks. And I think everyone should check it out. And I think it's really important that she's also a psychotherapist because yes. there's a whole aspect of she's weight real loss deal. and dieting and exercise and food. Mm-hmm. It's so mental. It's very it's connected. It's not even funny how mental mm-hmm. it is. The body can really achieve anything. It's not funny. It's um, the body achieves what the mind believes. So... It's really important. And on to the recipe of the week. So this is not an actual photo of our actual frittata. Oh, I had one. That's too bad. You did? I, I didn't did. even ask you. But that is similar to what our frittata looks like. This is true. That has mushrooms in it. I can tell. Uh, you would be able to tell. So we oftentimes make ourselves a nice Italian frittata. 
That looks like the pan we use now. It does. It looks kind of like the stove too. That's right. <laughs> but it's not. Okay. So this recipe I thought was cool to share because it, d- it really does make breakfast fun, healthy, and easy. Breakfast is a really important way to start off your day. I feel like especially in this weather, a nice hot meal is just what you need. Yep. Um, and you can make it compliant to any plan that you're on. Uh, we completely pretty much make this up ourselves. Some days it's with egg whites. Some days it's... Uh, just egg whites. Some days it's whole half eggs. Um, basically, if you can, start with a cast iron skillet. You don't have to. We also sometimes use a regular skillet. Mm-hmm. But now we are fully versed in the world of cast iron. Not yet. Not fully versed. We're not. Still need to read up on it a little. All right. Well, we have one. That's what I we mean. We do. We have a very <laughs> large one. Yes. So um, if you have a cast iron skillet, awesome. We like to spray it and put oil in it so it doesn't stick. Mm-hmm. We uh, saute up some onions and tomatoes. Um season that we uh salt no we don't really do salt we do a saltless seasoning so pepper some kind of like what is the seasoning that we use it's called like nature seasoning or something i don't know but it's really good no just put what you like salt pepper garlic and then we actually have parsley the joy of using fresh basil it's the joy of it is the joy of cooking so we throw in some chopped spinach fresh basil and then um, we break up some turkey. Mm-hmm. We season that. You can use any meat you like, but we usually try to keep it really clean. Mm-hmm. Whisk up some eggs, throw them in there, and let it kind of cook up till it's almost... At this point, you want to put your broiler on. If We use a broiler at home too, right? Yes, we do. Put your broiler on and let the sides cook <laughs> up. <laughs> where, where have you been cooking that frittata, Michelle? Depends. <laughs> Depends on the day. Depends on the week. I got a cast iron skillet and a gas stove. Mm. I'm going to make my frittata make anywhere. Make a frittata wherever I can. That's right. So um, once the sides start to cook up and it's almost cooked through to the middle, you're going to throw it in the broiler for like five minutes. Cinco minutes. about it. Keep your eye on it. Mm-hmm. And then that's it. You have a delicious, it's fluffy, it's like a tree. It's like a key. It is. It's great. It's yeah. warm. It's fabulous. It's really nice. So it's just fabulous. We will type that out and let you guys know, but that is our recipe of the week. It's our Italian frittata. Hooray. The cheat of the week. Another breakfast classic. Yes. Against all grains, pumpkin bread. It's nut-free and dairy-free, although the one that I make is not nut-free. The second. Mm-hmm. The second version of this. We use it with almond butter. I have made, I have made this Five times? Bread. Upwards of five times. Maybe three or four. I just wanted to say that. Upwards of. Upwards. Of five times. And she makes a mean one, and they only keep getting better. Yeah, because the last one I made for Thanksgiving, I put chocolate chips in it. That's right. So it's a very easy recipe. I can probably recite it right now. It's three quarters of a cup of almond butter. Three eggs? It's right here. Oh, (laughs) I don't have to be that smart about it. Two eggs. Um, No, it's three three eggs eggs. with the almond butter. Mm -hmm. Um, Maple syrup, gravy maple syrup, pumpkin puree, uh, ghee I used, but you can use uh, uh, softened palm shortening or unsalted butter, and fresh lemon juice, vanilla extract, coconut flour, cinnamon, nutmeg, grain-free baking powder, lemon zest, ginger, and sea salt. She makes it um, in like a food processor. It's always good, like when I start off like that, like, I even put all the wet ingredients in the food processor and blend it. But then all of a sudden, like my, while well, I make it in the Vitamix, my Vitamix doesn't want to mix in like the dry stuff. So then I pour it in a bowl and it's, I just mix it. Oh, do day. you? Yeah, I do. I have I'm to never figure home out. when she's making this. So. It's really fast. It's pretty fast. Yeah, and it is really fast. And it's delicious with any kind of spread. Yeah. Um, warmed up in the oven, in yeah. the toaster oven or a toaster. Really, really, it really good. It stays well wrapped in um, Air, plastic you know, in yeah, the fridge. Wrap it tight and put it in the fridge and it'll stays last for like quite a few week. days. Really? Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's good stuff. It is delicious stuff. So that's the cheat of the week. It doesn't make you feel so bad about cheating. That's right. And it's and if you have it, a piece of it in moderation, it can probably be compliant with yeah. your plan. It's gluten free. And you could probably add a uh, protein powder to it as well too. Oh yeah. Make that's a, a full great idea. Absolutely. On to the real talk. I'm sorry, my phone is blowing up and it's it's our it's our sister in law's bridal party. So let yeah. me just my sister in law, your sister's yeah. Party. So Thanks, guys. I'm going to do not disturb right now. Hi, Hi guys. <laughs> yeah. They're not watching. So on to the real talk. Lots to say for real talk. Got to try to keep it concise. So, of course, it was Thanksgiving. We cheated like maniacs, but we did stop. 
We did better than we've done. We in did the better past. than last year. Yes, we definitely did better than last year. We we got less food in general. Mm-hmm. We I think sent more home with people. Yeah, and we didn't like sit down to an entire gluten free pie. <laughs> Did we do that last year? Last year, I'm pretty sure it got to the point where it was just like us with the pie and the fork on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, are you surprised? No. Yeah. So we did well, but it doesn't take away from the fact that it didn't make me feel good to cheat. Right. And I also discovered that gluten is kind of a non-negotiable for me. So I would dabble here and there and be like, oh, I can have this because I'm really not gluten intolerant. No, my stomach was not happy with the gluten. So that was a learning lesson, a learning lesson, a learning experience. (laughs) Uh, And then also with running nine miles on set on Sunday, having eaten like that Thursday, Friday and Saturday, I, I know that I suffered. During my run. And it's like you put sludge in your engine. I was running on sludge, Mm -hmm. pure sludge. So a really big learning experience. Yes, it's okay to cheat on Thanksgiving. I'm not mad at that at all. But just to realize that if I do have something coming up like a race or, you know, uh, even a really hard workout, no matter what it is, your body runs on what you give it. Mm -hmm. And I was giving it a lot of salt and dairy and gluten and things I don't normally eat. And I felt the effects of it. So and the other thing is being really stubborn as I am needing to take the recovery after a nine mile run, but knowing that I also want to get back to my workouts. It's hard. It's hard to be like, right. When people were like, okay, so you're not going to do anything tomorrow. And yeah. you're like, no. Yeah. Yes, I am. But I mean, do like I want. today I am feeling it a little. My neck is bothering me because we did a hard workout last night. We did yeah. a workout this morning. I ran nine miles on Sunday. So, you know, your body will tell you when it needs a rest and, I could probably use a rest, but there's always tonight. <laughs> there is always tonight. Thank Except God for my for that. 30 squats. So. That's why, you know, work out in the morning after a long day. But I know you had some stuff to say on Real Talk, so let's hear it. Well, it's more about the maintaining your weight loss is really my thing. Like after reading through all these materials and um, thinking back on our journey, I never realized what my life would be like at the at the end of the of the road and granted I keep you know I'm on new paths now to different goals but the actual weight loss itself I've done it it's done you know and I did say that at one point that I wanted to lose another 10 pounds but that would be a lot for me yeah um so it's more a matter of building muscle mm-hmm. but knowing that I've maintained the weight for over a year, I think. I can't even remember when I... Actually, I do remember when I reached my goal. It was... Was it my thir- was my 31st birthday or 30th birthday? I don't even remember. Oh God, I can't remember. So it's been over a year. Mm-hmm. And... Um, but I... At the beginning, you never say to... You know, you say to yourself, oh, it's going to be hard. The hardest part is going to be to maintain it. Because you, you don't do. because realize the changes that you're going to go through along the way. But you know what? It, it is hard, but it's not at the same time. Because we did make a full lifestyle change. And yes, I did struggle with, okay, well, I've gained a few up. You know, well, now I got to lose that, like three or four pounds up. And I got to lose those three. Or four, and I would stress about it. But you know what? Now I've let go and said, you know what? That's not a big deal. It's I'm going to get back down. You know, I'm going to just dance around the number. I'm just going to dance for the rest of my life. And that's not, that's not a problem. That's normal. Right. And now the bigger deal to me is not that I went up three pounds. It's that I went up three pounds and I feel like hell because of what I ate. Or, you know, I like I said, I tried to go out and do a run and it affected my workout because I ate poorly. I haven't gotten on the scale once and I really don't care. Mm-hmm. It's just about how, how I look and feel and you kind of, I think, know that you're where you need to be when it, when you don't really just care about the scale as much anymore. Right. And it really all becomes about, you know, how you're being successful and how you're functioning and how you're fueling and how you're how you're strong feeling. you are. Yeah. yeah. And it's kind of like for us now, it's it's for our success. It's for our, you know, to see how we do with our fitness. Mm-hmm. So we don't want to sabotage that. It's like a well-oiled machine. Yep. You know, you can't put like Lisa said, you can't put sludge in it. So definitely. But yeah, you've come. We've come a long way. It's true. Well, that was all my, my contribution like to the it. Real Talk. I real like yours too. Talk. There was something else I was going to say, but I can't remember now. We'll, we'll get sorry. back to it. All right. On to the weekly theme, maintaining weight loss. As time has gone by, fitness has become such a huge part of our life. As you know, it's the way we socialize. It's the way we meet new people, um, the way we stay in shape and um, and get happy. I mean, we honestly can have a lot of fun working out and, um, you know, getting our fitness in. We can't really imagine life without it. You know, but this wasn't always the case, as you know. Yeah, when we began our journey, journey we definitely thought this is hard. But one day we're going to have to maintain this. I remember also because I started 
Weight Watchers a few times or started whatever we did, fasts mm-hmm. and diets that we did, I always knew that I was afraid of the maintenance phase. It was almost like the maintenance phase scared me away from getting to my goal oh. because I was like, maintenance is going to be so hard. How do you maintain that? And everyone would always be like, maintenance, maintenance. I know. Maintenance. <laughs> like, I remember that too. It was scary. But if you think about maintenance more as your habits and life is going to change anyway along the way. So why would you not keep that lifestyle? Because if you go back, that's how you gain the weight anyway. Mm-hmm. So maintenance is kind of just, your new way of life. So, uh, and you know, one day the weight loss will be done as it was for us. And even though we're still on our journey and the hardest part can be keeping it off if you make it the hardest part, but right. You know, if you make it like Lisa and I have been saying that this is my life now, it doesn't have to be as hard. Definitely true. And sure, we can still dread getting to the gym when the alarm goes off. We consider sleeping in. You know, there are plenty of days where we would love to eat whatever we want. Um, but our bodies are so used to eating clean that it doesn't make us feel as good as it, you know, as it used to. And I say food made us feel good because sure, you love the taste, mm-hmm. you know, it, you know, really sort of it made us feel good. Right. But now when we eat bad like it that, makes us feel bad. it makes us feel bad. So it's almost as if when your life, when your life changes so drastically like this, um, it's not that hard to maintain because you're going to eat bad. You know, you'll cheat and you'll be like, oh, it made me feel terrible. Why would I do that again? Yeah, definitely. So kind of like it's an automatic a, thing. And after a long period of time. Right. I feel like if you, you know, diet for a few months and then you go back right. to it, it's That's not going to be as not as bad, but yeah. And the funny part too is that we're both very close to our goals. Lisa actually reached her goal weight. Um, and you know, I never really reached my quote unquote goal number. Um, but I don't think when you were as big as I was that you really can realistically put a number on it because as well, you know, their skin, that's a factor. Muscle is a factor, but it's really more so how you look and feel. And if I was to tell anybody I weigh 160 pounds, they would be like, wait, what you weigh? What? Like, you don't look like you weigh 160 pounds. And you know what? I don't, I don't really care. Like that's me. I'm fine with it. And it's really not a number. It doesn't define who I am. So, um, and we continue to mold and shape our goals as we go along. And we're really, I mean, we'll never be quote unquote done. Mm -hmm. Even one of the quotes in here and in the articles that we'll get to basically we're like, it's not just mission accomplished game over. Right. You know, there's no done. Nope. So definitely not. And between holidays, birthdays, weddings, and other celebrations, believe us, it's difficult. Uh, you know, but there are a few good tips on how we do it and how you can too. So how? Well, the question is, how don't we do it? (laughs) That's a good one. (laughs) Because if it's been out there, we've done it. Not to say like fads and dangerous things, but it's fully just a way of life for us, which just means that it's just every day it's what we live. It's not that we are obsessive, but we know that we can't let our guard down when it comes to our fitness and our nutrition. As we said, we do cheat. And it is a sight to behold when we cheat. Let me tell you. <laughs> Remember when we told Kim that we woke up on, yeah. on, on, fr- on, on Saturday, Saturday? Yeah. And we were like, so we had leftovers and we had all of these things for breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> I texted one of our friends today, Lauren, and she was like, what did you eat? And I was like, no, the question is, what did I not eat? <laughs> I was like, pepperoni, wah, cheese, wah. antipas, super sod, spinach dip, cheese. I said cheese, cheese, <laughs> crackers. Uh, <laughs> pie ice cream leftovers they were like what (laughs) (laughs) so it's definitely a a sight to behold but we get right back on track we definitely used to struggle with constant cheats yes it's only been recently we've gotten better with cheating um doing a few whole 30s definitely helped us with that Mm -hmm. and we also realized that we kept sabotaging our hard work so why would we do that right and hold yourself accountable you know there's an app you know there are the apps out there my fitness pal packed pack will actually pay you to log your food and get in your 10,000 steps. It, you know, get to the gym and actually charge you when you miss your commitment. So that's, that's real. Definitely. That that's was motivating. Real. Oh my God, we forgot to say that was real. That was real. For real talk. Mm. So find a group of people, which we've said before, or a trainer or a fitness part- partner that you enjoy and you want to spend time with. It will make it that much easier to keep it an active part of your daily life. Surround yourself with supportive, motivational, inspirational people go to breakfast after, make it social, have something to look forward to, like reach out to us, whatever it is. It's funny. Um, today, a coworker, this new coworker of mine, she, we wound up getting on the topic, oh, because I had worked out this morning. She was like, how do you do it? And she was like, I really need, you know, I need people. I was like, well, you know, my, you know, Coach Kim was out at the track mm-hmm. and I knew she was there and I couldn't leave her there. So I had to get out of bed. Right. 
And uh, even though we were five minutes late, sorry, Kim. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, Kim. Uh, but so she was like, "I need that." And I was like, "Well, I'll email you in the morning and make sure you know, see if you did your workout or not. That's the best I can that do." That was kind of how we started. Yeah, that helped mm-hmm. definitely. So and like goes right along with this. So realize you're an example. You know, I'm obviously an example to those around me. I mean, the girls at work are always talking to me about we you know what I'm doing, what they can do. You know, this alone might inspire you to keep up your hard work. You know, if you know. You know, you know, you have others looking to you for support. You want to be that example for them um, w- and, and, and guide them as well. So, you know, we all started somewhere and there was something that sparked us to begin. And you should be that for someone else. Who knew? We didn't know. No. This was going to turn into what it turned into. No way. I, th- I It blows my mind when I think about no. it. I'm <laughs> like, this is my life. Like losing this weight totally changed our lives. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. And, and the people that are in it and. If you reflect on it, you know, you'll realize that's motivation enough to keep going. Mind blown. Mind blown. Mm -hmm. Remember that if you fall off, you can jump right back on at any time. Too often, and this used to happen to us before we really got where we are now, a slip becomes an avalanche. It's a domino effect. You let a molehill become a mountain of regret. Like it's a, it's just a mount, a pile of ice cream regret. <laughs> like I just <laughs> picture like a pile of dessert and it's like nothing but regret brownie steaming off of it. with the ice cream. Right? You can enjoy, you can have the ice cream in the brownie It sundae. looks like that though. Yeah. That's what that, that mountain of regret, regret looks like to me. Yeah. And it's like steaming and the word regret's coming yeah, out. Yeah. Because it. like the brownie's hot. Yeah. And the ice cream is <laughs> melting. <laughs> All right, now we're making people hungry. <laughs> I'm starving. <laughs> enjoy your, your cheat. Enjoy, you know, if you slip for a week, fine, move on. You know, you don't want to have to start back where you began. Just like um, this, the author of the book we spoke about said, you know, it's, a, it's when two pounds becomes 25 pounds that you have the problem. Mm-hmm. But, you know, and we would do this. We'd say, well, we already screwed up, so we're just going to screw up tomorrow. Boom. We're just going to screw up the whole week. Why not? We're just screw up the month. Cause I'll start next year. No. Just, just get right back on track. Not a big deal. It. That's the key to maintenance. Keep a before photo handy to remind yourself of where you came from and how, you know, that you're doing this, that you can keep doing this. Um, keep up your, you know, to keep up your healthy lifestyle. It'll be easier if you remember where you came from. Definitely. Accept, enjoy, appreciate, and celebrate your progress. We even struggle with this. We still don't always, I, I'm getting there, but own it, enjoy it, know that you worked hard for it. Why would you want to give that up? Agreed. And some things are beyond our control. You know, maybe you started a new medication, a trauma in your family happens. You know, just be patient and gentle with yourself. Reach out for support. You know, things like that can throw your plans for weight loss. And that, it's okay because there's there's time. Take time to heal. And when you feel strong, remember, you know, how much that original goal meant to you and get right back at it. Definitely. And, you know, so there are technical tips as well, as well obviously. Watch what you eat. Be active. Just realize it's something that you will probably always have to keep your eye on and your body will adjust to your new size as well over time. It's a slow process, but it's not impossible. Just as you set out to lose the weight, you can maintain that success by keeping this in mind as well. Listen to your body. Surround yourself with support and knowledge and and it's really, you got this. It's really not not as bad as it seems. It's really not at all. Definitely. And now for, you know, the professional's point of view, so people can see that we definitely know what we're talking about. Yes, because they say (laughs) all the same things that we say. (laughs) So 13 ways to maintain your weight loss uh, from men's health. They actually say that you probably heard that 95% of all diets fail. In other words, almost everyone who loses weight eventually regains it. This is not true, but it's understandable why people you know, may believe this. The problem is not really with the diets. It's the lack of guidance after your diet. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and this one uh, doctor here says that after losing 30 pounds, he described his new lower weight as shockingly challenging to maintain, which it can be. Um, they did a whole study on weight loss maintenance. And the National Weight Control Registry, to, in order to qualify for that, you have to lose at least 30 pounds and keep it off for a year. So their efforts reveal this bleak checklist for post-diet strategies that nobody enjoys. Exercise <laughs> at least an hour a day, almost every day. Follow a low-fat, low-sugar, low-calorie diet. Eat more or less the same stuff all the time. Minimize TV watching and eat your breakfast. Ugh. <laughs> so you can understand why dieters continue to search for alternatives but basically it's not all true they found that more than a third of those who lost at least five percent of their initial body weight kept it off about a sixth of those who lost at least ten percent were able to do the same so those are encouraging results so if you feel sh- that you fell short of your original weight loss goal just remember that 
permanently downsizing 5 to 10% of your original weight has substantial health benefits and almost certainly obviously improves your appearance as well. But to keep your weight off, you have to adjust. You'll require skills and practices that are different from the ones that you use to kind of take the weight off in the first place. So maintenance requires <coughs> a specific focus. It's like an exit strategy to a war, they say. <laughs> it's funny. It's like I said, it's not mission accomplished. You need to rethink how you're going to maintain the weight loss. So find your new normal. This is really, really important. So people think that at a certain point, you're going to get your old life back. But, you know, a huge fatigue sets in. You feel like you can't keep it up anymore. You literally can't have your old life back, though, because that's how you gain the weight in the first place. So you have to create a new normal. And there's a few practices to do that. So you weigh yourself regularly. People who weigh themselves often and consistently are best at catching and releasing new pounds before the interlopers acquire residency status. I think I need to take this scale out, to be <laughs> honest. Plan your meals. Uh, low fat, low carb, or a well balanced diet is fine. Just pick one and stick with it. Uh, eat the same thing most of the time. Vary what goes with the foods. You can have a salad for dinner. It could be grilled chicken, you know, with Shrimp. mixed greens and mustard vinaigrette, or spinach with raspberry vinaigrette. Chopped vegetables, sliced fruit, whatever it is, you're still having a salad for dinner. But you know, you can modify it to be a little more fun. Mm -hmm. Make a list before you shop. Obviously, you can't plan your meals without writing down everything you need. And if you go to the store hungry, and if you go to the store without a list, you're going to make poor choices. Yeah. Focus on the process not the outcome. So in the beginning, you think, okay, I'm going to lose this amount of weight and this is how I'm going to do it. But for weight maintenance, you kind of have to start with the process. And there's a few habits for that. Drink a lot of water, eat the same number of meals a day, include fruits, veggies, and lean protein. People who eat like that are among those who successfully manage their weight. Uh, follow a consistent exercise routine. Setting a monthly goal for workouts is helpful. Tell yourself you'll go 20 times and force yourself to do four or five workouts a week. Think like a winner. Major attitude adjustment among people with permanent weight loss is, is true. And uh, we've seen that for ourselves. Yes. Um, occasionally give in to temptation, that's fine. Weight loss is about deprivation. Weight maintenance is about having a treat here and there. And remind yourself why you need to stay vigilant, uh, like we said, a before and after photo. And don't forget your accomplishment, which is another thing that we said. I don't really like what he says here. Basically, he's saying, go look at other overweight people to remind yourself where you come from. Oh. Yeah, no. I would say to uh, have a photo of yourself to remind yourself where you came from. What? We don't need to fat shame. Wow. Yeah. Definitely like, not. Wow. That was the last line of the article. Did he really have to Oh, that's it? horrible. Yeah. Anyway. All right, but there then. were some decent tips there. And here are five key habits to maintain your weight loss by Sarah Dalton. So stop restricting calories. Don't don't eat nothing and then work out because it's just going to slow down your metabolism and cause, you know, your body to distress and then that totally throws everything off. Learn to eat a full balanced meals consisting of lean proteins, healthy fats, and plenty of fruits and vegetables. Duh. <laughs> uh, acknowledge progress and reward results. So, you know, realize that you've done it. Um, and also as far as maintaining reward your maintenance as well. Like, okay, this is, this is great. Like I've, you know, have a little treat. That's fine. Or you can just not even ha use food as a reward, that's right. you know, go for a mani pedi, go for a massage, you know, something like that. Buy yourself some new workout gear. I don't know. Oh, that's so exciting. Right? I know. I thought about today. I was like, oh, we need stuff for the, for the cold weather. I was like, maybe we'll stop at the store on the way home. Okay, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I, di I digress. Cold weather gear. <laughs> Stop wasting money on crutches, meaning juicing, mm. shakes, things like that. You mm -hmm. know, just be real. Right. Commit to an cooking your meals. Occasional juice and occasional shake That's is fine, okay. but right. don't make it like, okay, so now I'm going to use just Slim Fast. Right, right, right. Like, don't do that. Yeah. Um, don't go down to the juicing store and like have every meal there. Don't do that. Um, commit to cooking your own meals so you can control the portion sizes and ingredients used. It's so important. I and can't. When we are in a pinch for time and we need to get a quick meal out. We're so fussy anyway. Oh my gosh, we're like, so fussy. Oh. But then... I, I feel crappy when Still I feel eat crappy. food that I didn't prepare. Yeah, that's true. Unless I know that it came from like ceviche. Right. Or so, ceviche oh, doesn't make me feel night. crappy. I was thinking about going there after the show. Oh, uh, <laughs> please. But if it's from a place that we know is like organic and, and healthy and clean, that's why we're so appreciative of places right. like that. And they're hard to come by. But I'm like, I don't even know what I'm going to eat. Because like say when we're out of state and we need to like, we end up at like Panera. Not to say Panera is bad. 
but because we eat so clean and then to put some of those preservatives and salt. Still sort of processed We food. feel different. Exactly. <clears throat> Stop sacrificing sleep. So important. Your hor- hormones can become imbalanced if you're not getting enough sleep, stimulating your hunger and decreasing the production of leptin, which suppresses appetite. Sleep less than, if you sleep less than seven hours a night, studies show that you may be as much as 30% more likely to be obese. Oh my God, we need to sleep more. Yes, we do. And the last tip, stay active and stay accountable, like we said. Work out a couple times a week. Make sure somebody's there for you, whether you need to post a photo of yourself on on social media yeah. for people to see and be like, I did it, you know, and your friends are waiting for that photo. And don't, do feel, something. don't feel like, you know, posting a gym selfie is like, oh, it's only for meatheads and I'm showing off that I'm at the gym. If that's how you hold yourself accountable and you have friends supporting you, just do post it. that gym selfie because we're going to like it. Because <laughs> I like everything on Facebook. Oh, we're going to like it. <laughs> Friend us now. Friend us. <laughs> we'll like your we'll post. We'll keep you accountable. <laughs> <laughs> so this article is, you've lost weight. Now, how do you keep it off? Basically, it's a lot of the same stuff that we said. They go through a whole study. Um, you know, people who lost weight successfully did so by participating in weight loss problems, uh, weight loss, weight loss programs, but not all techniques that led to initial weight loss were associated with weight maintenance. So it's a different kind of set of rules here. Um, so they said that continually switching up exercise regimen help people lose weight for instance, but for instance, I can't speak tonight. Don't (laughs) mind me. It's nothing new, but those who kept weight off tended to stick with a consistent program. For us, we do like to change things up though. We've been more consistent as of late, Mm -hmm. but you basically have to experiment, uh, you know, with the different types of routines as you go along when you're losing weight. But then if you find what works for you, you stick with it in maintenance. So that was one of the things they talked about. And then there's, Four strategies that were noted that were associated with maintenance but not loss. So eating a diet rich in low-fat proteins, following a consistent exercise program, rewarding yourself for dieting and exercising, and reminding yourself why you need to keep the weight off. Uh, What gets you to the altar is likely to be quite different than what keeps you married for the long term. And it's important to adapt with different practices. Otherwise, you'll get in trouble. So if you have to not recognize the transition and adapt, you'll be, you know, back where you started. Right. Um. In order to maintain, and it's the same thing as losing weight, you do have to still eat a healthy diet and increase your exercise. People who lose weight and keep it off tend to eat significantly healthier foods and do a lot more exercise than the average American, which we know. Mm -hmm. And then there's kind of a shift between the weight loss and maintenance phase in a person's mind. So this is the point where rather than focusing on actively losing weight in the short term, people have to start focusing on long-term permanent lifestyle changes, as we've said, and behaviors if they want to maintain the weight that's been lost. The key to success, experts agree, is motivation, not necessarily the particulars of your weight loss program, but more so the long-term motivation. Thanks, Michelle. No, Lisa, thank you. This is an interesting article, the last one on our list. I know. I, I, the title alone is intriguing. You know what? It's, it's a little funny. <laughs> it's a little funny. The downsides... A little funny? Is that a song like Elton John? It's a little bit funny. Knew you'd get into that. This feeling inside. <laughs> I'm meeting my goal weight. Yes. And here are the downsides. <laughs> oh, my God. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> here are the downsides to meeting your goal weight, which I don't know why anybody would want to read this, but... You found it. It's more... <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Link. I kind of want to nix it. Um, so nix it. I, I'm nixing it. You just want to say nix. No. I want to nix it. All right, we're nixing it. We're not doing you it because what? it's not positive enough for me. Okay. Was there anything you took from it? Uh, what I took from it is this. You know, you when you're overweight, you look at people who are thinner and you think their life must be so easy. They can probably eat whatever they want. Then you lose your weight you and you realize, realize that's not true. That was a jerky comment and is completely untrue. Right. And it's hard work to stay fit and be healthy. And one other thing that we haven't even talked about, which is what my doctor told me, was that once you're overweight and you lose weight, you still always have those fat cells and they are there and they are chilling and they are ready to come back at any time. Dun, I dun, think dun. that is why someone who's naturally thin for most of their life, kind of you think they can eat whatever they want because you don't see them fluctuate because they don't have that propensity to go up and down. But someone who 
was overweight or has a tendency to gain and lose, they're going to have those fat cells and they can gain them back at any time. So you have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. There are people who I guess just have that natural skinny, you know, body. And then there are people like us who have struggled with it and we could gain it back at any time. So it's about remembering you're not immune and it really does have to be a lifestyle change. Once my doctor told me your fat cells are there and they always will be. It made sense to you. I was like, okay, that's why I gained five pounds when I cheat because they're just hanging out. So. Anyway, mm-hmm. on to the debate of the week. It's all about the core. Um, we got the shrinking jeans challenge, so check that out. We've got the we're squat squatting. challenge, but now we're working our core, which is also really important for us with our running. Mm-hmm. So a Tabata is a quick four-minute exercise. It's a two-minute cycle that you repeat. This week, you're going to do 20 seconds of planking with a 10-second break, 20 seconds of bicycle crunches with a 10-second break, 20 seconds of V-ups with a 10-second break, and 20 seconds of Russian twists with or without weights for a 10-second break. You repeat that all for a total of four minutes and it's get a good that. One. Do it Don't let it scare you away. That's right. And the holiday season is a hard time, so it's important to think, this is think very maintenance important. now. Absolutely. Don't think weight loss now. Just think maintain that's right as always a huge thank you to skinny man and three one for their help with the production of our show join us for our 52nd episode next week on wednesday december 10th with special guests gina and emily of the ekg project we can't wait to have you guys and remember choose commit, commit challenge, challenge and change, and change. Thanks, have a great guys. night have a great night